tangible evidence. Yeah, tangible proof. The, 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 the. He's too humble, son. You've got yourself there, now. Well, I'm a lone ranger this evening. I've got no team with me, but no worries. I've been sitting here thinking, and I want to do a little story about a situation in my life every Sunday going into September. But tonight, what we're going to talk about is know your neighbour because it's. How can I start? Right, so I've come back to Kentish Town and um, I've noticed a lot of things have changed, right? And it's like people <coughs> are kind of doing things for the better now, right? And there's a more of a real community spirit, not for ego purpose or for any sort of malicious intent. There's a lot of things going on in Kentish and Camden they're really eye-opening at the moment. And it's had me thinking. <laughs> the difference between your neighbours, right? So, I've moved back into Kenny Sands, as everyone knows. I'm around the manor full-time. And I, I drive out and come in out of the country. I mean, out of the city. But when I've moved back into this little manor, like the neighbours, yeah, actually a nice communicate actually interested in you and actually care about what you do. And I'm not talking about me in general, yeah? I'm talking about other people. Oh, right now, some people do. But the ones that don't recognise me, when you communicate with them, yeah, they communicate on a much more community, unified, solidarity sort of aspect, yeah. And like I said, <laughs> Knowing your neighbour in the 90s. So, I oh, knit hog. Alright, sorry. Shit. Sorry about that. Yeah. So, you had, back in the 90s, yeah, you had every kind of neighbour. Yeah. Not just any kind every kind so your neighbours back in the day were made up of everybody within society yeah and I'll rephrase that <laughs> where I lived it was surrounded by everybody in the criminal fraternity or someone from the criminal fraternity or someone involved in the criminal fraternity in some way or another and I don't know whether it was just my estate so I can't talk about every estate. But what I can talk about is the estates that I frequented and the estates that I hang around on. And that was quite a few in North London, East London, South London and West London. And I'm not even being funny. The old Kent Road I was over there from the 70s up through the, up to the late 80s. My auntie lived over there, Cooper's Road. So I was over there playing around Bermondsey and over the train tracks and all that in the the old brewery, right? And all the neighbours over there was all pretty much the same, similar. Everybody on the same sort of path, same journey. And there was a couple of people, there was always a couple of milkmen, but the majority of people where I lived was just normal, up to no good, right? So, I'm kind of spoilt for choice, right? Now, obviously we're on this platform and, um, I get a bit of stick when I talk about certain things, especially things that are personal to me, and it offends some people, my reality, you know, and I'm not on this platform to sort of clout chase or sort of create problems or traumatise people, right? What I want to do is that, that we was brought up in, and it's, I'm, look, I'm not saying it, for an excuse, right? Because I've had my path, I've done it, I've been who I was and I'm proud of where I went, what I've done, what i overcome, right? And I'm glad I've done everything and I'm glad I got here today, yeah? And I'm totally appreciative for the universe to give me every opportunity to do what I'm doing, yeah? And I love it. I really do love it. 
However, yeah, like, I can't be the only one, like, I, like, I think the systems, right, loads of systems that make us work and make us grow up and make us fail, make us fall over, like, I think, wow, do you know what? It's all designed for us all to flop, yeah? But if we all come together, yeah, and start working with each other, with each other's skills and doing things on a platform where everybody benefits, yeah, I'm pretty sure we're going to be making moves in the right direction very quickly. So what, what I did say to you is I'm going to start something in September. I'm going to long tank in September. And whoever gets involved, gets involved. Whoever don't, don't. But I'm going to show what hard work, determination and commitment get you in a few, like this side of Christmas, do you know what I mean? So we'll kick it off with a story of a neighbour, a long standing family friend, someone who I grew up with, my ex-partner grew up with, the family grew up with, families, interactive families. I'm not gonna mention names, right? But I'll tell you the scenario, and it's a fact, it is a fact. Rest his soul, um, since COVID or something like that, I'm not a million percent sure. But um, let's go back. So we go back, we're in the 90s, yeah? Everything's fire, alive. Everything's a million miles an hour. And uh, there's a hell of a lot of robberies going on. There's a, a hell of a lot of shootings going on. There's a hell of a lot of everything. Like, the 90s was alive. Like, it was like, oh. So what I said in one of my um, biography, not biography things, one of my um, quote things, yeah, it was like leaving the house every day, preparing to die or be killed. Like when you was in the game in the nineties, that was just how it was. And I'm not victim me, but no, I'm not. I'm just telling you that was the normal. And anyone that was growing up in the nineties that was on badness can tell you it was. If you were serious. Yeah, and you was involved in what you're involved in, then every day in the nineties, yeah, if you was about that life, I'd say ninety percent of us. Well, I don't know, but ninety percent of my mates, yeah, <laughs> prepared to die. A movie script, like I'm not making it up. It's just every day you left your house with your vest on. Not not every day you wore your vest, but every day. You wore you. You had your protection, and like I wouldn't walk about everywhere with a vest on. But if I was going into hostile territory, the tools, the, tools, the weapons was on board. And if it weren't with me, it was with the car behind me, or the car in front of me, or the car behind me, or the car in front of me. Either, either. Like there was tools at hand. Do you know what I mean? And everybody, not just me. I'm not saying it because I'm me. I'm just saying that everybody like was at it. Everybody, and it was it was. Different to what it was today. Today there's a lot of screaming and shouting. Yeah, a hell of a lot of screaming and shouting. And a lot of mean, like meaningless. Although, let's see, it's ironic because all the meaningless stuff that goes on today, yeah, with all these youngsters in every end, yeah. And this is what I'm saying about know your neighbours, right? So all these youngsters, yeah, that are having these murders, stabbing each other, killing each other by accident, go to prison, regret it, and turn their lives around. Right? Whole families fall apart, aunties fall apart, cousins, brothers, everyone's clashing in the end. This stuff creates. Now, back in the day, we all fall over things. Like, and although it was regrettably, we was defending something. Do you know what I mean? Like, now it's just, it's just like for nothing. Like, literally, for nothing, like, and I, I just, I don't get it. So I don't know why all these youngsters are out here doing what they do, right? But maybe, maybe, maybe it's situations like this, yeah? The program, and this is the programming, right? So just imagine, I'm going to tell you a story now, right? And... You've got to imagine the mindset of these children, of these parents, right? The mindset of the children of these parents. Hear what I'm saying to you, right? So I'm going to tell you a story about a wholesome, law-abiding citizen, right? Worked every day of their life, yeah? And then done this. And then actually went on to done some horrendous stuff. Not to me. 
to their own family, right? So, and this is your neighbour. And I can talk about it because I'm part of the process that the neighbour created. And do you know what? you got to know your neighbour. And people know what I'm talking about, know what I'm talking about, and people know who it is, know who it is. So I'm not here to look for glory or fame. I'm here to bring awareness to those who don't know that people like this exist and they exist. And they'll be sitting right next to you, pretending they love you, pretending you're family, pretending you're this and pretending you're that. All right, so cast your mind. Um, you know what? Some people can't even fathom what I'm about to say. So I'm going to tell you in a story-based manner. All right, so... Now... I actually got arrested for this firearm and I went to prison, not for this occasion, at another time, for another occasion, but I was actually arrested with this firearm, so I can talk about this firearm. And, um, yeah, I can talk about this firearm and the situation. Because so I have to think, right, can I get arrested for what I say? That's how deep it is, you know, because, I mean, um, I've got to... I was living a life of horrendous traumatic magnitude, so the highest level of stress you could ever imagine being in. Just multiply that a few times, and that was what it was like going on an armed robbery, right? And getting the money and sort of getting home, getting the money, staying safe, all that stress, prioritisation of your, your family, your home, your money your possessions, right? Like So everything is extreme. So because everything was hand to mouth and sort of easy come, easy go, the armed robberies became a way of um, surviving in a mythological way without any real substance but enjoyment. And I was always one of them people who was trying to get out and trying to do things. So I tried to save money and try to put money aside, but anyway, there's a couple of people in the plot that pretend to be good, and you understand why, so anyway, we're flying about, everything's going off, everyone's getting money, everyone's robbing stuff, doing stuff, so, I decided, well, I never decided, I think it was um, Mike's partner, asked one of our friends to hold some money, right, so they held the money. Anyway, it was a, su a substantial amount of money. I won't say how much, but it was a substantial amount at the time. So they gave him this money. Anyway, everything was rosy enough. I've seen these people. How we doing? How we doing? You're like, oh, yeah. How we doing? Yeah, yeah. Kiss to the missus, handshake to the bloke, getting on like fabulous. No problem in the world. Not care in the world. No one's got any issues, right? Anyway, so something happened one day. I was out with a graft and... I think we went on a bit of work and it would come on top and then we're about to leave it. So I'm short on a few quid, right? So obviously all my money that I used to get, like, and my pals will tell you this, people that work with me can vouch for this, right? So I'm not talking shit. My money went indoors and I lived off my missus. Do you know what I mean? So I'd get my missus, give my missus money and she'll pug it up and whenever I need money, I know she's got a few grand there. Like, I cut like, <laughs> some of them still de demand that I owe them money still yeah I clap money give them money to hold yeah take money off of them and then I owe it back to them so I'm still in debt apparently anyway so the missus is giving me pal so called pal a right lump of money to look after and we're going about our life anyway I've done something it's got a bit pear shaped so I'm skinnish so as you do Asked me, Mrs. have you got any readies round your bag? She said, as it happens, I have, you know. I put um, a few quid in blah, blah's house. Now, I lived in 15 County Gardens. Now, these people lived just round the corner. Like, literally, along my block and then round the block and in another block, right? And uh, she said, oh, I'll give it to them to hold for me. I said, oh, wicked, that's right, lovely. I'll pop round and, have a, I'll pop round and, and grab it, as you do. Like, it's... 
everyone knows when it's family, it's family, when people look after things and you put things in people's ass, you don't have to ring up and ask to come round. You can knock round the house, have a sound now we're doing, you walk in, have a cup of tea, whatever. But can I grab that bit of scratch and then leave, right? So there's me. Tap, tap, tap. How we doing, mate? You all right? Yeah, yeah, come in, my way again. Oh, I'm squeezing up, blah, blah, blah. I said, uh, oh, the missus told me she's uh, left some money here. What? The missus said she's left some money. I was coming to grab it. What are you on about? I was like, the missus, she's left some money here and I've come to grab it. Don't know what you're on about, mate. She ain't got no money around here. I was like, are you sure? She's like, I'm telling you. Bye, bye. Hear what Mark's saying. Blah, blah, has left some reddies around here. I ain't left nothing around here, mate. I was like, yeah. Cheeky bitch. So obviously I've gone back home. I said, what are you doing? What are you on about? I said, yeah, I don't man, eh? Yeah, well, I have. Relationships and there's a, a, a level of trust in the relationship and all my partners I've been with, I've trusted them undoubtedly. I thought, wow, do you know what? Miles will be a shrewd nut. So I thought, do you know what? I'll pop round there. So I pop round there, guys. Listen, tell me if I'm having absolute murders over this bit of scratch. Can you come and tell her what you told me? Because she's telling me you're talking shit. So the pair of them said, sweet, not a problem. So I said, come on in. So I goes round home. Ten minutes later, they've put, walked in. And they've walked in. I'm telling you, they've walked in the ass, yeah, as fucking bold as brass, right? Happy as that. Yeah, blah, 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 blah. And I was like, right, Reddy's, what? You left Reddy's round there. She said, yeah, I'll give you that on this date. Well, you're not, you never give me no Reddy's. I'm like, what? So you never give me, but you know when you know, you know when you know, you know when you know, yeah? You know when you know. So I knew by the look on the faces, yeah? So I've grabbed the bloke. Put an apron in his mouth and just said, I'm going to ask you again, mate. Where's my money? Do you know what I mean? And they got my money. And they got my money, they didn't get the money. The money got given back. And I was just thinking, wow, I've known you my whole life. My whole life. And you've just done that to my baby mum. Like my partner at the time and and look me clean in my face and said that. And you think about the love, the devotion, the commitment you give these people. And over money, the only thing that brought honesty was a bullet to the head near enough. Do you know what I mean? Like, you just think, wow. And they talk about love. So be careful how you love strangers. Or, as I said, Jamaica, be, be, be careful how you favour strangers, but be care, more, more careful about your fucking partners and your pals, mate. You know your neighbour. Like, think about it. How many of you know your neighbours? Like, how many of you speak to your neighbours? How many, how many community, like, I'll tell you what, I went to the, uh, the Sloth Club CIC over South London, um, West Norwood, I think it was. Um, hook ass uh, yesterday and listen let me explain something about community yeah so I'm going to show you a little reel in the week when I update it'll be an update on the uh, on the story time I'll give you a little reel of what went on over there like Barnsley Castles music food and I'm going to be doing a couple of things like that around there because what they've done was next level so I'm going to be bringing some things to Kentish Town and hopefully we're going to have some fun and we're going to have some Neighbour building projects. Yeah, you know I mean, and you know, know your neighbours, man. Like, let's build something in our communities, you know, like.
it's bad enough now, yeah? Everyone's trying to survive, right? So everyone's out here trying to survive, right? But yet, yeah, everyone's neighbours are hostile from a different place, different attitude, you know, like, try communicating. I'm, I'm, I'm learning that. So I've been through my process of learning patience. Now I've got to master the art of communication. So my process of transition I'm going through is like still going on and it ain't easy because at times I want to punch people's heads in, do you know what I mean? Like, and I really do. Like, not in a bad way, but you know, you just think, I'll oh, fucking give you a... Nah. The way my brain ticks is just not normal, but these thoughts still go through. These, The way we analyse still happens the same, you know, so... The outcomes are different because the choices are different, but the information still goes in. The analysation still happens the same way, and then we choose to do things differently now. You know, so for all those that are caught up with that limbic system of chaos and mayhem, yeah, just just know you can change, and it does get better as you get older. That's one thing I do know. Do you know what I mean? Like everyone says to me, "How do you do this? How do you do that?" It's just age and wisdom, and not wanting to sit in prison. Do you know what I mean? I'd rather sit in my hut than sit in prison. Do you know what I mean? Like, people that know me know I'm not gassing. I'm here, I'm doing what I'm doing, and I will show you. I don't gas, I don't talk crap, yeah? I might talk a lot of bollocks, a lot of people say, but it's very seldom that I am wrong, okay? Wrong, yeah? Might get things a little bit confused, but it's very seldom that I'm wrong. I mean, I'm wrong, I love my hands up, because I love learning, do you know what I mean? But who's your neighbour? Who's your people? Who are they? You know, because... There's still people out here that want to throw your life away. There's still people out here that want to see you get hurt. They'd rather see you in prison. They'd rather have a laugh at your expense because they're earning money out the back end here. You know, like, come on. Know your neighbour. Know your neighbour. You know, and it's... How can you put it? It's, it's never-ending, right? Like, it's never-ending. So... There is a multitude of scenarios. Uh, just all coming back, neighbours, this one done that, that one done this, this one done that. And it's just crazy that back in the day, yeah, you could actually leave your door open. Your neighbours were cool. Do you know what I mean? Like, every one of my neighbours knew each other. Do you know what I mean? Like, you know who the oyster was, you know who the thief was, you know who the armed robbers were, you know who the straight goers were, you knew who the fraudsters were, you knew who everyone was, where everyone lived and everyone done, yeah? And all the older parents worked and most of the kids were just up to no, no good skullduggery, right? But we all knew each other. Like, you could knock round your mate's ass and just sort of go in, go in and open the door and, and say, you in, mate? So yeah, I'm up in the bedroom. And you go in, say hello to the mum and dad and run up the stairs. Like, it was different, you know, like, your neighbours was your neighbours, you know? Like, your people were your people. Like, nowadays, like, it's mad because your neighbours are not even your people. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's weird. You know, so we need to start working on a new principle, right? And what I've started working on, me, myself, yeah, is being a better human being. Yeah, so I'm working on trying to be the best human being I, I can be. Now, I will be the first to admit that I still pop and snap and bark, but I can't help it sometimes. And I can say that the only one time I do lose my mind, like, not, I just get really frustrated and passionate, do you know what I mean? It's over my kids with my ex-partners and things like that. But I do, because I'm accountable for who I am. I'm accountable for who I am. I'm accountable for what I've done and the trauma I've created. And I'm trying to make it better. I'm trying to do good. I'm trying to change lives, right? And I'm trying to put myself and my bloodline in a much better place after I die. And I can't try any more than that. Do you know what I mean? I really can't try any more than that. Yeah, but your neighbours can assist you achieving your goals if we all have the right synergy and the right mindset. And human beings are a species. In, we've all got to start working as a species. And you know what? I'm not saying that 
don't have beliefs in religion and don't have beliefs in this and don't have beliefs in that. Have your beliefs, man, but believe also, yeah, that we are human, are human beings, homo sapiens first, yeah? That's what we are first, right? And then if we all treat each other the best way we can, yeah, first, then everything will be better. But if you're treating people different because of their colour, their religion, or their place they live, then you're 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 warped. You're warped. You're you're deluded. You're confused, and you need help. Like everyone should help each other. Everyone should be around each other. And you know nowadays I'm actually speaking to a lot more people, doing a lot more things, right? And it's easy communicating as long as you're not doing bad things. So I'm saying, so I'm learning a different frequency of communication, right? And it's just more eloquent, it's more structured, and it's more meaningful, you know? And to my people, yeah, just expecting always exploding, dramas, chaos, I'll get the excitement and all that, yeah? But I've lived it, I've breathed it, I've ate it, I've slept it, and I've shat it. Do you know what I mean? And I'm tired of it. So I'm going to give you glimpses of it, do you know what I mean? Because... You need to be reminded, like, the reality of that world, yeah? Like, I get a lot of attention right now on this platform, yeah? Not because, not because of the gangster image, yeah? It's because of the message, yeah? And the passionate and the honesty in what I say. Do you know what I'm saying? So... If I'm being that real and that honest and that passionate about something that's going to ultimately put you in prison, harm you or kill you, yeah, then you need to be listening. Like, it's not rocket science. I mean, it's really not rocket science. Now, if I was talking shit in any way, shape or form, then I'll shut my channel down. Because it ain't worth it. So I've got people jumping out, jumping in, jumping over, fucking trying to come up, like trying to attack me, right, from all different angles. So you all see what happens on these platforms, right? So you can't come out and do too much too often because people attack you and drag you away from what you really need to do. Do you know what I mean? And because of other influencers and other people's agendas and other people's strategies, it creates conflict on this platform so my message is always going to have a bit of conflict getting to the people but we will prevail because the weak-minded yet shallow grooming parasitical people parasitical is parasites parasitical just means just like it's like sucking the life out of stuff do you know what i mean so all them types of people i've lived with them forever i've dealt with them forever and i've had to sort of punish some of them <laughs> because do you know what they're sad individuals do you know what I mean they're the people in the community that just do you know what uh, they say don't bring back capital punishment and all that yeah but me personally yeah I think if you're that if your crime's that horrific then you should be taken out like I'm all for sex offenders, nonces and all that, yeah. And do you know what? I'd even go to far as to say, yeah, executing murderers, you know, like, like the death penalty, yeah, for innocent people. Do you know what I mean? So if people get killed innocent, that are innocent, then you should get the death penalty. But if people are in it, the criminal world, yeah, they shouldn't get the death penalty. You should do bird. And I just, I think, you know, it's a mad little fault, but why would you want to kill people? Do you know what I mean? Like, I used to live in a world, Mike, where killing, stabbing and shooting was normal. And it was accepted as a way of currency. Do you know what I mean? Or bartering. Or positioning. Like, what the fuck, man? Do you know what I mean? Like, I've actually heard people say, well, if we are any mat, yeah, if we are any mat, then we can do this, this and that. I think, wow. And ironically enough, yeah, and you'll see, 
my storyline's going to be coming out about lots of different things, but it happens over everything. Like, there's a few scenarios where people know their neighbour, people that had it with their friends, got walked to their death down to their neighbours, down to their friends, down to their pals, yeah? Thrown under a bus, like, I can't even, it's just disgusting. It's disgusting. Disgusting. Like, some of the atrocious criminal acts, yeah, that some of the brothers, some of the uncles, some of the family, like, the things they do, man, like, and justify it. It's madness. And, like, People might attack me and say, oh, what are you talking about? It's a liberty when they do that. But it ain't. It's a fucking liberty what we do. Like, if you think about it, yeah. Like, how could you think it is actually okay, yeah? It's okay to shoot people and stab people multiple times for verbal. Really, like, for verbal. Like, verbal. Like, not some... For verbal. Do you know what I mean? Verbal. Like, do you remember? Sticks and stones will break my bones, but names will never hurt me, right? There's people sitting in prison now, yeah, doing bird down to verbal. Verbal. Like, how are we programmed? Do you know what I mean? Like, think about it. Know your neighbour. Why would your neighbour want you to kill, stab or shoot people and go to prison? Why would they encourage you to have ag with people so you can go to prison? Like, what are your people saying to you? What are they saying in your ear? Do you know what I mean? What are they telling you here? Because I'll tell you something now, yeah? Everyone in my family, yeah, that have come close to any ag, I've got them out of the manor. I've, I've, I've never personally got them out of the manor, but I've manipulated the situation, created a scenario, and people have made the right choice to go to their places of comfort. And people are living their lives happily now in my family that have made the choice to come out. Do you know what I'm saying? Come out of the environment, come out of their cities, and just change, do things differently, right? And that's my blood. Right? I've done it and I've come back. My blood have done it and they'll be coming back eventually when they're in a much better place to say, look, what have we done? Like, why are you lot still doing this? Why are you lot still doing that? Come, do this, do that, do this. Because this is what we're going to be doing, yeah? We're going to be that neighbour there that offers you opportunities to become a better version of you. I don't want to take nothing off no one. I want to give opportunities. I want to give platforms. I want to give networks so we can reach heights that we ain't been to before. And if we come together, yeah, then we can do it. Know your neighbour. So, I went to one of my mates once and I said, I need some money. I need some help. I need some money. And he wouldn't give it to me. And then, he helped draw a document point me in the right direction and now we're in the possibilities of raising unlimited amounts of funds uh, life is about learning learn about you learn about your environment learn about your neighbours because your neighbours and the closest people to you will bring you down especially in that criminal world uh, People in that world, they'll tell you, they'll love you, they'll protect you, and they'll look after you. And they'll swear blind. And they'll mean it. They really will mean it. But will they deliver? No. They won't deliver. They won't deliver. They'll just deliver pain, suffering, prison and death, and a whole heap of lies. Do you know what I mean? Manipulation, deviant behaviour, it's all nonsense, all of it. Why? For what? Do you know what I mean? Like, that's what we got to start shouting from the rooftops, man, for all the youngsters, because you know what? I'm actually going to be able to show you, and that's the beautiful thing about it, and I don't give a monkey's how long it takes me, yeah? Because I know every day is a step in the right direction, and the universe puts everything in place for you once you make right choices, so we are growing. We are going places and we are going to achieve goals. And, yeah, you got to think, where do we go from here? Where do we go from here? Where do we go from here? So, tonight was my first storyline, story time. So what I'm going to do 
like I said, I'm going to tell you, I want to cover subjects. There's going to be a subject I'm talking about, and I'm going to tell you a story about a part of my life. Sometimes they'll be long, sometimes they'll be short. Uh, but I'm going to, I've got a lot of stuff to talk about and use as reference, point of reference. Do you know what I mean? Just to compare. Because I don't want people to think I'm out here trying to gas shit up. I'm trying to show you it ain't worth it. Like, it ain't worth it. It's just not worth it. And you'd be better off educating yourself, learning what you can, and fucking growing to the best of your abilities. Do you know what I mean? Like, this legal thing's simple. Like, and I, I'm, I'm not joking when I say I'm broke here. Yeah? Like, I'm actually proud to be skint and grafting from the bottom up legally. So no one can tell me nothing when I get there. Right? Because I've done both sides of the coin. Do you know what I mean? And I know I'll crack in this straight shit. I just wish I'd have done it sooner. And when we get it, you're all going to see. So then everyone can come and see me and say, how? And I'll tell you. Do you know what I mean? And I'll have a percentage of what you're doing. And that's what I'm going to do. That's where I'm going. That's my legacy. Because I want 5% of company, like hundreds of companies. I don't give a monkeys. The more the better. Do you know I mean? The more I can add value to, the better it is for me. So the companies that I will be getting involved in and the ideas I'll be getting involved in is the only the ideas that I can add value to. The other ideas I can signpost to other people, but what I can add value to, I want my 5%. Do you know what I mean? And then we'll blast it, grow it, and do what we need to do. And what I'm learning now, I'm going to teach. And I'll do it publicly with you lot, and I'll do it privately with my clients. Yeah. <laughs> we'll be getting some paying clients who want to become little moths. Do you know what I mean? Because there's people out there hitting things now like, the next few months we're going to be showing you something. I'm going to know it. Do you know what I mean? Like, the the pipeline is going in. The, the, the trenches have been dug. Now the pipeline's going in and then we should have flow. So I'll let you know as we get on. Mm. Ah. So, yeah, I keep looking at me clock because I like to have a quote at a certain time. So, for those who don't know, there's Marv's medical cannabis patient card because of my PTSD, my split personality, and my uh, ADHD. I'm allowed to... Uh, Legally administer my medical grade cannabis. <laughs> uh, know your neighbour. Like, how is it nowadays? I haven't been in the plot for time. Do you know what I mean? Like, I really don't know what it's like in the plot anymore. Like, it's next level. Like, what are the neighbours like nowadays? You know, like, do people interact like they used to? Is everyone still... Like, I don't get it. I don't understand it. I've just been so far removed from my old life. I have no sort of understanding of any of it anymore. It's crazy. Uh, that's one thing we can all rely on. Change does happen. Uh, let's change for the better. That's what we can do. Change for the bar. Change for the bar. Mm. No. Is that about that? Like, <laughs> right, here's, here's a story about you know your neighbour. This was a good neighbour. So we've had one bad neighbour. So I'll end on a good neighbour. Right, so, and people that know this story can verify it. I might have it slightly wrong because Marv used to be intoxicated with substances and I didn't really know what I was doing sometimes when I got psychosis. Because so I got a lot of psychosis as a young man through taking too much cocaine and stuff like that, yeah. So obviously we was in a war zone and it was a war zone. <coughs> <coughs> And we was living in a war zone. The 90s was a war zone for the people on the road. There was lots of stabbings and shootings and lots of goings on. I was a target, okay, among um, 
many other men, amongst other many other men in my group of people, my circle of friends. We was one side of a fence and there was people on the other side of the fence and everybody was out there trying to hurt, shoot or kill. And it was just how it was. Teams of people out every day. Two, three, four carloads, scanners, earpieces, just looking for the opposition. Um, and it's sticky, you know. People are getting caught slipping, people are getting shot, people are getting licked down, and it's it's active, and it's active, it's active, it's active. All around mid 90s, late 90s, hella active. Then bam. Everything is just next level. So I'm in the kitchen. I've had a mad night out. I've been out. Because I used to go out from Thursday to Sunday. Start off with the Legends. Then number 10. And then wherever. End up in Grays and then other gaffs there after. Anyway, so I get in Sunday morning. Wired. And you know, it's like eyes are going. Anyway, it goes through the gates. I've got, everyone knows my ass. I used to have gates in my ass and all that. Yeah, so I've got in my ass, gated up, but I've got in the kitchen. So I'm sitting in the kitchen, rolling a few joints, had a couple of lines, bit of music on. All of a sudden, I've, I've sort of looked out the window, and it's, you know, when it's dark, but it's getting light. You hear the birds and that. So now I'm standing in the kitchen, having a talk, doing a couple of my mates, having a chat, and we're talking. Yeah, we were sniffing, yeah, sniffing, sniffing, sniffing. And all of a sudden, it's got to about 10, 11 o'clock. But in my head, yeah, it's still early morning. So I'm in the kitchen, looking about, doing what we're doing. All of a sudden, Sam says, me, have a look out the window. So I looks out the window and I see someone b bending down between the cars, right? So looks out of window. And I can just see bodies behind the cars, yeah? So I thought, what? Fuck. Are they out here? Are they, is that, what the fuck? And I can see them like, head popping up, having a look about, getting down. I thought, what the fuck? Who's that? So I'm looking out the window. I'm kind of, I'm powering out thinking, rah, how many of them is there? So I'm clocking as two, three, four. I'm thinking, rah. Rah, they're coming for me, man. They're gonna, they're, they're gonna come in my head, yeah. They're gonna come through the door. It's not possible, but in my head, they're gonna come through the door and they're gonna come up and they're gonna keep shooting until they get me. And there's four of them. Ah, uh, I might not have enough bullets, and I don't know what to do. So I thought, fuck. I tell you what, I'll go out. So I think I can't. I, I cannot remember whether or not it was a Mossberg pump. Or I think it was a Mossberg pump. Or a hang I'm not sure what it was, right? So it was either a Mossberg pump or a shotgun or a hanger. Like one of them I can't remember exactly what gun it was, right? But it was a big fucking gun. Anyway. I will mention I was arrested for this gun. Okay. So I'm not talking about any other guns apart from the gun I was arrested for. Right? So anyway, I've I've come out, I've, I think these people out there to smoke me, to eye me out, yeah, so I've, I've come running out of the thing, yeah, I've, right, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. but in my head, yeah, in my head, I see men with balaclavas on, that's what I saw, men with balaclavas on, right, so I've kind of, I've screamed at these geezers, and I don't know what kind of happened, but I've screamed at the kids, and then all of a sudden, my mates are there saying, Marv, 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 what are you doing? I'm like, what do you mean what am I doing? They're saying, give me the thing, mate. Give me the thing. I'm like, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? What the fuck? These lot are here to do me. They're like, Marv, man, they're not. They're kids, mate. What are you doing? I'm like, what are you talking about? Fucking kids. They'll come to smoke me, mate. What are you on about? They're like, Marv, Marv, listen to me, please, mate. So as they're coming towards me, I'm, I think now nah, they're in it. So I'm paranoid. So they're in it. They're here to kill me. What the fuck, man? And uh, I'm heated. So it's very animated. My arm's coming up. I'm waving about. And this is in Camden Town, yeah? Uh, broad daylight. And 
I don't know how old Bill never drove past or so I never reported this one. But it happened, mate. I'm fucking telling you. So I've laid all the kids down and then I've got my pals at gunpoint telling them what the fuck you mean they're not they're not here to do me what are you lot in it. And then by the grace of God, right, by the grace of God, right? And I don't know I don't know if she's still with us, rest her soul, if she's not. If she is, reach out to me. You know who I'm talking about, Jude. You know who I'm talking about. So, I'm sticking it on my pal. Fuck it, fuck it, fuck it with this gun. Like, get away, they've come and kill me. You lot, fucking what you block playing at? And then, this beautiful person just come up behind me and got me in a bear hug. Now, you got to understand the courage of this woman, right? She come up behind me, yeah, and she was a big lump. She come up behind me, she put me in a bear hug. And she was like, what are you doing? I was like, what? And... I'm not joking, she like sort of picked me up and waddled me over and like she lived downstairs so she's dragged me in her gaff and she's got, Marv, relax, stop it, stop it, stop it, they're fucking kids, they're all the kids in the flats, what are you doing, you lunatic, they're kids. And I'm like, what, what, it's not, it's not, and I was trying to explain to her what was happening with the war that we was having, but she said, Marv, she said, obviously she's giving me a few Valium, I took the Valium and I sort of calmed down and uh, they were right. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, I, I got that intoxicated that I actually became delud delusional and what I saw wasn't a reality. What it was a reality, it was there was all the kids in the flats. And uh, me being me at the time, is as sick as it is, yeah, because when I think about it now, I thought, wow, imagine this. Imagine, yeah, imagine uh, someone knocking on your front door, yeah, and saying, uh, say your name's John, right? Hello, John, how you doing? Look, sorry, mate, um, I'm, I'm really sorry about this, but I actually pinned your kid down today with a, with a firearm because I was out my night on cocaine and I thought he was trying to kill me. You know what I mean? And <laughs> I laugh now because it's fucking nuts, yeah? Like, how? How is that acceptable? And at the time, yeah, I actually thought I was doing the right thing. Like, look, mate, I'm really sorry, but I, I pulled a tool out on your kids early because I thought someone was, some, I was out of my night and I thought someone was trying to kill me. Like, and that was normal to me, to go and apologise because I got paranoid. I thought, I was, uh, Know your neighbour. Know your neighbour. Do you know what I mean? Because, come on, what are we living in? What are we living around and what's it all about? Do you know what I mean? And what I'm learning now is everything I was about as a kid was all about for what? A load of bollocks. It really was. And I don't know why so many people get addicted to that life. I mean, I know why I was addicted to it. And I just, to me, right, and I, I'll say this in closing, to me, living that life, yeah, I'd done what I felt I had to do to get out of it. I didn't feel I had any more options. I didn't feel I had any other platform, any other network or any other option. I, I tried to get help. The system tried to help me. The system... I don't know, man. It just... It failed. And I became an absolute lunatic. So know your neighbour. Because you don't know who you're walking up the road with. You don't know who you're standing next to. And just be nice. Why don't all our neighbours be nice? It make life a lot easier for all of us, you know what I mean? And selflessness is the key. So for all those out there that wanna go out and arm people, hurt people, do badness, just remember, you reap what you sow and it comes back and gets you. And it really does. So for all those out there that are destined for greatness, I see you at the finish line. Stay safe, stay focused, stay positive. Marvin Albert, straight back at you. See you soon.